I was on court the other day with one of my students doing some backhand volleys, and I think it's a good time to do a bit of a compare and contrast with uh, him on the left and me on the right. And he's a good volley. He actually hunts the volley really well, but there's a few fundamental technical things that we need to have a look at. And as always, you might be able to spot the difference here as we begin. But just before I really dive into this, if anyone is enjoying these, please do click in the link in the, in the, link in the description, grab your free swing audit. I'm here to help and get a coach as much as possible and get you guys and girls playing some really good squash. Okay, so here we go. You can probably hopefully notice one of the first things. As always, I like to make sure it's at the same contact points. For me, the main image that's striking here, it feels like I've kept my energy pretty well loaded. Uh, my student on the left there, he's just in a position where it's all a little bit too open. You notice that angle of the foot there, he's even leaning backwards ever so slightly, and it just feels like a lot harder work. It hasn't quite, he hasn't quite been able to store that energy as well. As I'm looking at that ball there, I'm trying to keep my racket nice and vertical in that position, bringing my shoulder out, bringing my hips around, and also possibly his starting position is a little bit deep. So he got in there behind the ball, and then he's trying to create momentum or try to create power by pretty much leaping onto the ball. And that's not ideal. Okay, so let's have a little look at a few of the fundamentals there. I'm quite a big fan of this whole shape of the swing there. Like I said, it starts up nice and, and, and simple. Let me just go through it frame by frame. So as I'm swinging there, notice how it drops down. I call that position two a lot where it goes horizontal. That racket at that point is pretty much purely horizontal. My shooter on the, on the left actually does a pretty good version of it. But let's have a look at the difference there. Look at the difference in the elbow. So my elbow feels a little, well, not a little bit, quite a lot lower. And, and it feels like there's a lot of tension in there. It feels like that shoulder is pushing up into his chin, whereas my shoulder is, is high-ish, but it feels like it's rotating more. And I think for me, that's probably one of the big contrasting images there. Just looking at how high he's pushing his elbow up and how much tension there is there, as opposed to mine being a little bit low and loaded and ready to unleash. So again, I'm just going to go through that real slow-mo. So that's position one. Position two drops around there. You know, we got about the same height of the racket. I think the racket's at roughly the same height behind us, but the difference is where that elbow is. And then position three, and actually what I really like about this when I go slow-mo, it's actually really interesting how the racket drops below the wrist just a little bit in that position, because now to go and hit the volley, look how that forearm is facing upwards, racket face is facing upwards. Again, very good for my student here, but it's just the... Uh, tension in the shoulder and, and almost like the lack of stored energy, I think is key. What then happens just as a coaching point, look at how they, they, the, the forearm pronates. It goes from, you know, that position around to meet the ball. It turns, the racket head now goes just slightly above the wrist and that's where the real punch comes in. It's a lot in that position. If you just look at mine on the right, just rolling through that a little bit. And again, yes, it's a bit blurry because obviously going super slow-mo, I'm going to try film some in really, really slow-mo of this in the future. But you can just see then, and yeah, look at, look at the, I just want to go back to my student here. And again, it's not, you know, too severe, but if we're just looking at the angle of his shoulders, you know, there's, there's a dip, you know, if, if, if that straight line is the horizontal, his right shoulder looks above his left shoulder. And that's not ideal. Whereas you notice mine, they tend to be a little bit more locked in. That energy is a bit stored. And yeah, it just, it, it's just not quite as, as efficient. And then at the contact point, you know, we're both relatively okay there. Like, you know, things are, are nice and strong there. Things are nice and strong there. Uh, interesting, you'll notice how much he's lunging and getting almost too low in it. I don't think it needed to be that low. And it's, it's relatively the same height if you think about that. You know, it's not too dissimilar, the height of that ball coming through. But my student definitely gets too low on this, whereas I'd like to see him stay a little bit more upright. And then let's just finish off with looking at parts of the follow through. Yes, look, notice his follow through there as I'll look at what's happening is hitting. It's punchy, but it's not quite releasing through. Just going back to mine on the right, as I make contact, there's that roll there. And now I actually just kick it back up a little bit. I just try to lift that racket head back up above the wrist. I'm just trying to make sure there's a bit of a punch, a bit of an acceleration a bit of a flick through at that point to make sure I send that ball through, keep myself nice and steady and strong. And you'll yeah, notice there, I love where that racket position is finishing at that point. Student's racket position is finished a little bit low, a little bit across his body, possibly not getting the full amount of punch and release there. 
Look at mine on the right again. Hopefully you can see that there's the punch, the little roll, and then the kick up at the end. So hopefully that makes quite a lot of sense to look at it from this angle. And I do like changing the angles. I've got a few different ideas of different angles I'm going to be looking at in the future. But as always, thank you for watching to this point. If this resonates with you, please do leave a comment. Please like and subscribe and share to the channel. Spread the word. And as always, click on the link in the description. Grab your free swing audit. And while you're there, why don't have a look at the squash playbook? The link is there as well. Until the next video, take care, everyone.